So I'm doing a mid-year recap of 2023 designer fragrance releases today in a ranked list. 20 different fragrances that were launched this year from different designers, all put in one video and ranked from my least favorite to my most favorite. It's mostly a male and unisex list, and I have some bonus options as well after the outro. If you're curious to learn about these, then please stay tuned. much for tuning in this is sebastian yesterday we're talking about designer releases from 2023 wanted to do what's been launched in the middle of the year to let you know what's great and what's not so you guys can check them out and things like that and today we've got 20 different fragrances all from the designers i'm including guerlain in the list yes i'm including guerlain as part of designers because they've been around forever and they kind of sell with designers when you had uh, all these uh, different uh, designers and Guerlain mixed in with the uh, different fragrances. But we're going to go ahead and get started with the first fragrance. Going to the House of Armani, It's Stronger With You Amber. This one right here. Now, this was a complete disappointment for me. It, I am not the biggest fan of this series, and I don't even know why I bought this. I ordered it from a store, and I got it really quickly, and I was quickly let down. The thing is, I was really enjoying the leather of this. The oud was okay. Now, between the three, leather, oud, and uh, amber, my favorite happens to be uh, the leather followed by the oud and then followed by the amber but the amber features notes of amber with vanilla and lavender and for me this one reminds me most a lot of the original fragrances so i felt like it wasn't really doing anything exciting for me to even uh, you know consider buying for the price tag they're charging so it's a bit of a disappointment but it's nice to have here in the studio for when a, a client comes in for a sniff session and they want to find out what it smells like i can pull it out and things like that but at 20 it's stronger with you amber from the house of our money moving on to the house of tom ford we've got electric cherry this one right here at number 19 yeah, this was a complete disappointment. It was very shampoo or soap-like. Also kind of Bath & Body Works kind of smell. Wasn't as luxurious smelling as something that I would see from Tom Ford. And they launched two cherry fragrances together, Cherry Smoke, and then we, we got Electric Cherry as well. And that's why Electric Cherry is just a bit boring for me. But it features Morello Cherry with Ginger, Jasmine, Sambac, Amber Tallied, Pink Peppercorn. I wanted to love this, but it smells kind of cheap to me. So it's ranked at number 19, but it beat out uh, Stronger With You Amber. Moving on to the house of Dolce & Gabbana. This is Light Blue Pour Homme Summer Vibes. In the most gorgeous bottle, what do you guys think of this collection with these? I think it's a limited edition collection. You know, um, I'm more of a fan of the, the ladies release in this collection because it smells a little more interesting than the men's. But I think this one's pretty decent. It's better than Electric Cherry, obviously. And it's Alberto Maria's with Cypress. Uh, he created it, I should say. With Cypress, Sicilian lemons, and amber wood. There sure is a marine thing happening in here. But the Cypress and the lemons kind of give it a boost and interesting thing about it. Definitely, I, I like it. It's not like wow kind of a fragrance, but it's definitely wearable. But I wasn't really a fan of the original fragrance when it came out. And I need to go back and resample it to see if it's anything uh, great these days. But either way, light blue, poor ohm summer vibes is at number 18 and then we've got a fragrance from the house of uh, Givenchy it's gentleman's society this one right here so they took gentleman's series into a totally different direction keeping a little bit of something similar to the rest of the collection that originally launched in 2017 and now we've got something different with cardamom, vanilla, narcissus, cedar, palo santo, Haitian, Madagascar, and Uruguayan vetiver with sage. So they went into an aromatic, woody, earthy direction with this kind of minerally smoky scent of daffodil or narcissus in here. Spices and also woods. It's a, it's a decent fragrance. It's not anything exciting. And I 
don't know why they kind of veered so far away from the original DNA, but they're trying something new, I guess. So Gentleman's Society from Givenchy is at number 17. But next at number 16, as I said, I've got three different Guerlain fragrances here, one bonus and two in the main list. But this is uh, L'Homme Ideal Platine Privé, this one right here. So Platine Privé seems to me very similar to L'Homme Ideal Cologne, uh, and uh, it's not anything really special for me. It's a great freshie, I think. But for me, they had cologne, they got rid of it, now they brought, brought this back. So it's been a bit disappointing that they would do like a little trick on us like that. But some of you really like this one and some of you were missing cologne. So perhaps this would be a, a great fragrance to have in your collection to smell fresh with the kind of almondy touches that Lomidial collection has. But this features notes of musk, vetiver, green almonds, neroli, grapefruit, and bergamot. But either way, it's pleasant to wear, and I'm sure some of you really enjoy this kind of a scent. This is Lomidial Platine Privé from the House of Guerlain. That is at number 16. And then going to the House of Bulgari, it's Bulgari Man Rain Essence, this one right here. If you like the idea of a rainy smell, the smell of rain, kind of ozonic, watery, this is definitely one for you to try. It does have the kind of subconscious cooling effect and it's kind of very musky and watery with musk green tea oranges there's a white lotus note and lotus flower to me has a kind of watery touch to it anyway when you smell it so it's perfectly situated in this fragrance for the watery effect along with some amber and guyac wood it basically rounds out the fragrance it's extremely fresh and refreshing and so if you like the idea of watery musky fragrances definitely try uh, Bulgari Man Rain Essence. That is at number 15. And then this next one, I was very surprised how good it is. It's CK1 Reflections. This is a unisex offering, just like a lot of other CK1 fragrances. And to me, this is kind of sort of like a Bulgari Man Rain Essence in that for this one, they have a watery effect happening with ice notes. They have ice listed a couple of different times. I believe we've got top, heart, and base notes featuring ice. So there's definitely a watery effect and also lots of musk here with woods. There's lemons, green tea, ginger. So both of the fragrances are a bit similar, but I kind of prefer the CK1 Reflections a little more than the Bulgari Man Rain Essence. So I've ranked uh, CK1 Reflections at number 14. In fact, recently I had a client come in here. We smelled that one and she seemed to really like that one for some reason. But moving on to number 13 it's Rosha Man Intense this one right here from the house of Rosha 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 so this one is uh, like many years after the fragrance launched in the late 90s now we've got an intense version and I compared it to my vintage bottle of Rosha Man it's a bit softer and lighter than Rosha Man of the vintage bottle but I feel like they've done a pretty good job here with this just kind of amplifying and intensifying the original fragrance I don't have a current formulation bottle of the original but what I smell here is quite nice it's quite delicious it does remind me of the vintage one I have as I was saying just a bit lighter it's lavender with vanilla and cappuccino note with cedar and citruses quite nice definitely uh, great to have this is Rosha Man Intense from the house of uh, Russia next an in, a unisex offering from the house of Maison Margiela it's on a date this one right here now this one might have launched at the very end of uh, last year, but it kind of made its debut at the beginning of this year. So it's been around for a while. And I like this one. It's a very fizzy, sparkling, kind of a rosy, sparkling wine effect here with the notes. It's kind of a very, very satisfying the fact that you have this kind of a fizziness like you would experience from champagne, almost like wine smelling champagne, like really strong because you get that here. But it's notes of blackcurrant, rose, pink pepper, patchouli, oak moss, geranium, davana, vetiver, bergamot, and musk. And also it's a Sheepra. It's a very modern Sheepra fragrance. So if you like the idea of that, definitely check it out. This is on a date from uh, the house of uh, Maison Margiela. I feel like Maison Margiela is a bit uh, kind of, uh, kind of not doing as well is what I should say. Uh, what do you guys think? They had a big uh, high there for a long time. Now it's a bit low. What do you guys think? Let me know. But this next one's from the house of Cartier. It's Pasha de Cartier Noir Absolu. 
you know, this one's kind of growing on me. It's not one of my favorites. And even though it's a very, very smoky, it is kind of grown on me a little bit. I'm liking the smokiness contrasted with the vanilla caramelized sugar in here. But it has burnt wood and caramelized sugar that they say. I believe there's also some aromatics hidden behind the burnt wood because in the end, Pasha de Cartier is kind of like a fougere fragrance with lots of aromatics like lavender and things like that. It. I was excited about it when I first found out about it. Then when I got my bottle, I bought it and I thought, um, oh, it's a bit boring, but it's slowly kind of growing on me and I feel like it's pretty decent. Plus it has most beautiful bottle, as you can see. This is a beautiful black a matte finished bottle and I really, really love it. And uh, anyway, Pasha de Cartier Noir Absolu is number 11. So up next, a fragrance that has not been released in the States yet. It's from a, the, the designer house of Brunello Cuccinelli. This is Por Homme, this one right here. They launched Por Homme and Por Femme together. Also quite pricey, but I really like what this fragrance is. It's a freshy created by Olivier Cress, but it smells really, really fantastic on me. It's focusing on cypress with angelica. There's ginger here, black pepper, clary sade, and also additional kind of woodsy and uh, spicy notes. For me, it smells great. I think it's perfect for the summertime because the cypress is pretty intense, but everything around it is kind of fresh for me. Fresh spices and also aromatics. But Angelica comes in with its kind of bitter green, uh, kind of powdery vegetal touch in here to kind of contrast with all the other notes. But either way, Brunello Cuccinelli Por Homme is at number 10. Hopefully that will be launched here in the States soon. I'm not sure when it's coming, but... I picked it up uh, at the beginning of April uh, several months ago uh, in Milan where they had just put it out in their uh, store um, and I was walking by and I saw it there and I'm like, wow, they've launched fragrances. This is the first of uh, hopefully many to come. Uh, but moving on to the house of Tom Ford once again, this is Cherry Smoke and I feel like we've got Tom Ford in this list the most because they've launched the most fragrances that I've bought from any designer and Cherry Smoke was definitely better than Electric Cherry, but with my review, I felt like these were both disappointments, but I've grown to enjoy Cherry Smoke a lot more than Electric Cherry. Electric Cherry, as I said, smells a bit cheap and uh, not worth the price tag they, they charge for fragrances. But Cherry Smoke, on the other hand, is dark cherry flavor, saffron, osmanthus, which kind of has the, the smells of apricots, olives, and leather. There's smoked wood accord and cypriol. So it's definitely kind of a smoky, resinous, ambery take on cherry. It's much darker than Lost Cherry, and Lost Cherry is even a little darker than uh, Electric Cherry, I feel like. But this is definitely, smoke. Cherry Smoke is definitely the darkest out of the three and the least booziest for me. But Cherry Cherry Smoke is fun, uh, definitely enjoyable. This is from the house of Tom Ford. If you don't know that one, check that out. But moving on to the house of Hermes, we've got Un Jardin Ossithère, this one right here. What a great fragrance this is. This has grown on me quite a bit, and I really like the way it smells. I haven't really used my bottle because when I bought my bottle, I got a bunch of samples of this. So didn't want to waste those so I've been using those and I really like this because it's so different than the rest of the Jardin collection this kind of goes into more of a gourmand direction because of the nuttiness with the pistachio which is kind of kind of a, a unique thing for an Hermes fragrance inspired by a Greek garden I believe and it's olive wood dry grass and pistachio and this never became the year of pistachio it kind of didn't but I think uh, out of all the pistachio fragrances that launched this year, this is definitely uh, pretty solid and uh, very unique to see Hermes going into sort of a gourmand direction, which I never see with Hermes. But either way, this is Un Jardin Ossithère from the house of... Um, uh, Hermes. Unfortunately, I don't have my bottle of Soleil de Faux from the house of Tom Ford, but this was a new flanker in the series of Soleil fragrances from Tom Ford, and this is featuring notes of tuberose, sandalwood with benzoin. So they took the fragrance into a darker, ambery direction, but still focusing on the tuberose and this kind of creamy uh, sandalwood note, and then of course the benzoin with its resinous, vanillic, uh, you know, ambery touches. So that's Soleil de Faux at number seven and then Tom Ford again we've got Grey Vetiver Parfum here at number six uh, who's a fan of this one it's not you know it's a great take on the original Grey Vetiver I'm just a bit bored of uh, Vetiver so it's kind of ranked low because of that also the reason um, uh, Lomi Dial Platine was ranked so low is because I felt like it was uh, 
very similar to Cologne, even though Cologne, like the L'Omédial Cologne was discontinued. But Grey Vetiver Parfum is intensified take on the original Grey Vetiver. If you thought that Grey Vetiver was a bit uh, too light, you might want to check this one out. It's a bit metallic for me, but very earthy and also a bit leathery with Vetiver. There's orange flower and saffron here and also has a kind of a floral backbone. Not the backbone, but more of a floral heart, I should say, because of the orange flower kind of amplified. There's definitely citrusy touches in here but for me it's so dense with uh, the vetiver note and uh, other kind of woodsy notes that they've added here that they're not really you know crediting but either way gray vetiver parfum definitely pretty solid just a little boring for me these days i don't know why vetiver seems boring uh, but I am working on a Vetiver video, so stay tuned for that very soon. Moving on to the House of Dior, it's Dior Riviera at number five. This one's kind of growing on me, and I'm enjoying it. And also, I've been given a lot of samples of this one as well when I bought it, so I've been using up my samples. But this is Francis Kirkjian's first official creation for Dior, Dior Privé, after he became creative director. It features notes of roses with figs and green notes, and it's definitely kind of a sunny solar take on these the fragrance with these kind of notes with the greenness and the rosiness, and then of course the bitterness of the figs, and a bit fruitiness as well from the figs. Uh, pretty fun fragrance. I think it's great for summer. Uh, it was uh, not like, wow, 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 because, you know, we know Maison, or I shouldn't say Maison, but we know Francis Kirkchen can do some wow fragrances. This is kind of growing on me slowly, and I'm enjoying it when it's warm outside. So either way, Dior Riviera at number five. So at number four, going to the house of Louis Vuitton, it's Pacific Chill, this one right here. Yes, they did. My, they redid my bottle. Basically, they didn't give me a new bottle. They took the thing out because they can refill and popped in a new thing uh, in there. So it's now spraying. But it features notes of basil, blackcurrant, ambrette seeds, peppermint, cedrat, oranges, carrot seeds, coriander, grass rose. A light, light, very light rosiness. And it's very, very musky. But for me, it feels like a herbal, aromatic fruit cocktail that you would go and have somewhere where you're kind of, you know, uh, it's a health kind of a cocktail without alcohol maybe like a smoothie with all these herbs and fruits and things like that but it smells very very fresh and it does definitely have the dna of like something like afternoon swim but either way pacific chill fun fragrance definitely i think it's fun for summertime the next one's going to the house of ysl it's queer the 2023 edition a lot of you were telling me to go ahead and uh, check this out because it's really really great i don't remember the original version of this this is a 2023 version this one's launched here in the states as well unlike freaking baby cat which is uh, which i don't get what they're doing with that marketing but this is oud suede leather and violet leaves so you've got these kind of dense notes soft uh, more uh, dense woods with the oud and the woods there a little softer with the suede leather and a very fresh ozonic you know surrounding with the violet leaves here so there's definitely contrasts here it's still it's pretty heavy from the oud and the suede leather but definitely more on the fresh side with this leather uh, with the ozonic touches of the violet leaves so it's a queer from the house of YSL and you guys are gonna be surprised my top two are you know regular line fragrances so it's Gautier Lamel Elixir is number two this is actually a really solid release from this house. I really, really love it. It smells fantastic. It's pretty dense. It's intense. It's definitely more on the sweet side and more gourmand side compared to the Le Parfum version that launched in 2020. But definitely a pleasure to wear it with the most gorgeous bottle here. Uh, this is Jean-Paul Gaultier, Le Mail Elixir at number two. And we have a Guerlain at number one. The Habit Rouge, Rouge Privé is such a really beautiful fragrance the sad thing is it's a limited release so if you can get your hands on this one get it because it is super fantastic and it's taking habit rouge into a leather direction and it's i'm obsessed with the way it smells it smells super fantastic if you love the idea of habit rouge with its kind of freshness and vanillic touches freshness from like a lemony touch and then also the vanillic touches but overdosed with loads of leather this is going to satisfy it's super uh, amazing release and thankfully they've done this. I'm disappointed. It's a, um, you know, it's a, 
uh, limited edition, but uh, thankfully it's out because it is super fantastic. And that Habit Rouge Rouge Privé is number one. What do you guys think of these fragrances? Let me know your thoughts. How would you rank them if you had these? Give me a top five or something. Let me know what else is missing. I know I don't have everything. There's a bunch of other fragrances most likely that have launched uh, that I did not pick up. But let me know what there are. Uh, put a comment down below so I can find out. But either way, guys, thanks so much for watching today. If you have any questions or comments, please do list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. Okay, bonus fragrances. The first one I'm going to talk to you about that should have been on the list, but I've got it too late to actually you know, put it in the rank list, but I'm going to feature it as a bonus fragrance because once I kind of wear it and experience it more, perhaps it'll end up more on the list. But this is from the house of Guerlain. This is Harvest Neurolia Vetiver. So basically, it's Neroleum Vetiver in the original. This is a flanker, and they've added tons of honey, and they've sweetened it up and made it very honeyed sweet, along with the Neroli and then the Vetiver. So there's definitely a woodiness with an earthiness with the Vetiver here, kind of like its base note and then you've got this honey in the heart notes which is really uber intense along with this kind of sweet honeyed neroli note of neroli it's super amazing i really like it and what they've done to the original i believe this is not the first flanker they also have the forte version of this fragrance which i do not have but this one was recently purchased and i am really really enjoying it especially if you love the note of honey i believe this is also a limited edition so if you like the idea of this do get it now. I actually bought that from Macy's with their 15% off discount recently, and I'm glad to have that. But we've got two fragrances from the house of Zara I wanted to feature here as bonus. Full Moon Over the Desert and also Imperial Purple. Both of these are very solid. If you caught my video of these fragrances, uh, Imperial Purple was uh, ranked at number one. Full Moon Over the Desert was ranked at uh, number two. Imperial Purple for me is like a take on Dior Homme Parfum or Dior Homme Intense. Fabulous fragrance. If you can get your hands on that, get it. Full Moon Over the Desert is a bit of an animalic take on leather. Really both solid fragrances that I highly recommend from Zara. Next, going to the House of Rocha once again. Eau Rocha Citron Soleil. I've speak, spoken about this quite a bit. I think it's a great alternative for the now discontinued Louis Vuitton Sun Song. This is a female targeted release, but it's very unisex, especially uh, that it reminds me of Sun Song. And it features lemon, neroli, orange blossom, watery notes, woods, white musk, and also fig leaves. Really great fresh fragrance with the most beautiful bottle, as you can see. So this is Eau Rocha Citron Soleil. Um... This is a Brunello Cuccinelli Porfem, this one right here. So the Porfem is a different take on the, the Brunello Cuccinelli, Cuccinelli fragrance Por Homme. This to me is a musky take on some woods and nuttiness like chestnut node. Definitely really great fragrance. I, I like it, but there's spices in here and woods and orange blossom, citruses as well. This one is uh, created by Daphne Bouget, where the men's was created by... Olivier Cresp. And then the last fragrance I'm going to talk to you about is Dolce & Gabbana's Light Blue Summer Vibes. This is an Olivier Cresp fragrance and it's basically a flanker of the original. The original reminds me of Jardin de Amalfi from Creed. This to me is a bit different, but then it reminds me of the original Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue as well. But this mostly for me is a collector item. I really love the bottle for this one and the poor Ohm. Anyway, thanks so much for watching today. Stay tuned for another video tomorrow. Have a good one. Goodbye.